ways you shall know. Come on, son, try not to remember. <laughs> Times. At some point, you gotta decide for yourself who you're gonna be. Can't let nobody make that decision for you. You gonna tell him why the other boys kick his ass all the time? I'm strong. I'm good. No, I just seem good, and you ain't it. Hi, welcome to What the Flick. My name is Christy. That is Alonzo. That is Matt. And that's Ben. Ben's now here. And um, he has seen Moonlight. We've all seen Moonlight. It's probably one of the best movies of the year. I think it might be the best movie of the year. Matt's going to describe it. Please describe it to us. All right. So Moonlight is the story of a boy named Chiron. We first meet him when he's very young and goes by the nickname Little. Uh, he's on the run from some local kids that want to beat him up. And he hides out in what is probably a crack house and gets kind of taken in by the local drug dealer played by uh, Marshala Ali. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we learn something about Little that then we see later when he's a teenager and played by a different actor, and then something happens, and we later see Chiron as an adult, uh, and he's played by a third actor, and one of his boyhood friends uh, is played by Andre Holland, comes back into his life. Uh, this is a fantastic movie, covers three different time periods, uh, very dramatic. Uh, let's watch the trailer. Listen. To who, Ma? Huh? To you? Who is you, man? I ain't seen you in like a decade. It's not what I expected. What did you expect? I want to look up all three of the, the actors' uh, names who play Chiron because... Uh, Alex Hibbert very... plays Little. Okay. Um... Sorry, this is in order okay. of appearance. Yes. Uh, Ashton Sanders yes. plays a teenage, teenage Chiron, Chiron, and then uh, Travante Rhodes. Rhodes. And they're all great. Who so is what, a college athlete, I believe, right? Interesting. Oh, yeah, okay. Travante so, Rhodes, so I believe, is an athlete. the play this is based on, from what I understand from the, the Q&A that I went to after I saw at LACMA. By Terrell McCraney. Right, which is right. semi-autobiographical because he was young and black and gay growing yes. up in Miami. Um, is It bounces around in time a bit. It goes back and forth a bit, whereas Barry Jenkins, who directed and, and wrote this, does it in the three pieces, and that, that really immerses you in his story. You become so emotionally invested because you see from the, the, the youngest age um, what he's up against just to survive right. every day, not just in the, the violence surrounding him, but in his own home right. and, and within Naomi himself. Naomi Harris. Who's amazing. Naomi Harris is amazing yeah. as his mom. Um, and just what he has to do to survive just to be who he is but still protect his sense of self and yeah it's it's a it's an interesting you don't get a lot of gay movies that include boyhood and so the the whole first part of the movie it's that thing where the world knows you're gay but you haven't quite figured it out yet but they're already like mocking you for it and 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 bullying you about it and then you get to the middle period where it's like i always say you know teenage boys have more ways to call you a faggot than inuits can say snow you know <laughs> so um that's you know having to deal with the high school stuff and then the adult section where you sort of get the 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 the, the long lasting effects of his sort of lifelong kind of search for love and acceptance and, and understanding and not even in a like love me world i'm gay but just like Human connection. Right. Um, He's so closed off. Yeah, it's immensely powerful. This movie yeah. and so beautifully shot. I mean, uh, Jenkins's first film was a, a, a little indie ten years ago called Medicine for Melancholy, which if you have not seen, I, I urge you to check out. But it's a black and white movie, and it's it's beautifully shot, but in a completely different way. And this one is in color and really rich kind of blues, mm -hmm. and and uh, the the play actually is called um, Moonlight, like Moonlight black makes boys black, boys blue. Blue. black boys black boys look blue. Look yeah. blue. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's stunning. Really. Yeah, and what's, and what's cool about it is the balance of aesthetics because it is, is gritty and it is really hard to watch at times, but then there's great visual right. poetry. It's almost dreamlike and ethereal. It's gorgeous. I, one of the things that impressed me with this movie, uh, over and above the performances, which are terrific, and the writing is so good, the way it's shot, it's shot in this rich, warm, you know, you feel this, like you really do feel the warmth of Miami there, and yet 
there's this isolation and almost despair to it that you really are following Little and his story and or Chiron and his story and and how he's all by himself and and you know every once in a while somebody comes along that he connects to and there's that desperate like oh you know you see him start to maybe open up to someone that may actually accept him as a person and then they and then he loses that and you know repeatedly and it's devastating. I, this is the last film that I saw when I was at Toronto. Um, I had another film to go see after it, and I ended up not seeing anything because I wanted to end on a perfect note. Mm -hmm. I think this is a perfect film. I agree. Ben? Um, I hated it. Um, <laughs> I, no, of course I didn't. It's impossible to hate. You know, there. Though I think, I'm not an actor, obviously. Um, we know. Yeah. We yeah, yeah that's all White House now. I can't remember. They're all the same. Uh, they're all the same. <laughs> what are you about? Well, was way more fun. Right. <laughs> you said you're not an actor. Lip swallows. <laughs> um, so, like, being stoic and closed off emotionally is easy to do and the hardest thing to do incredibly well. To do engagingly. To yeah. do engagingly because <laughs> you literally have very little to do. You can't. And somehow, all three of these actors, specifically, I think the first and third um, did it so and it, the, not that this the, the, the middle age, the middle school high school one is also t terrific that performance also terrific but the first and third are <laughs> it's so hard to do and yet I mean man that you talk about leaving on an I mean that emotional ache that you yeah. feel at the end and you can't even pinpoint what these actors did exactly to get you there so I mean it was you know, it's literally you let the movie end in when I saw it, and you like can't quite leave yeah. the theater. You I just, was sobbing. I had tears running yeah. down my face, oh, and, of course. And, and it sneaks up on you. Yeah, because it really it's, it's a quiet film, it's an intimate film, and then all of a sudden, like bam, I found myself crying. I'm going, "What the hell just <laughs> happened to right. me?" But <laughs> with but with an incredibly quiet finish. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it also right. the last really, scene in yeah. the kitchen is amazing. You know, and I, had, I could go straight from this to J to Jack Reacher. Just oh, FYI, right. <laughs> while y'all got to soak in well, it's wonderful. And the thing is, like, there's some movies that'll be, you know, I, you probably saw some of them. I saw some of them in Toronto. You probably saw some in Telluride that are very emotional and get you crying, mm -hmm. but they, they hit you with it, mm -hmm. and they're really obvious, and they play you like violence. Mm -hmm. This one is subtle. This yeah. one, you know, it's it's like when you get that that shot with the really sharp needle, and you don't feel mm -hmm. it initially, and then it hits you a couple mm -hmm. minutes later, you're like, oh, shit, that's what this movie does. It sneaks up in you so much, and you, I still am thinking about how much it grabs you, because it really does help you inhabit the life of Chiron, mm -hmm. and, and give you the slightest glimpse of what he may have, what what somebody like that may go through. And he and Andre Holland have wonderful chemistry together. Mm -hmm. You know that the scene in the kitchen again, it's really subtle, really understated, but lovely. Yeah. And, and Andre Holland is so good in this because because yeah. all versions of Chiron, he's like he's kind of withdrawn, he's kind of stoic, and he he has this wonderful friend who has this great swagger to him who helps bring him out and. Uh, as it were. I uh, want to mention I want to mention James Laxton, who's a cinematographer, both for oh, this yes. and Medicine for Melancholy, mm -hmm. uh, who weirdly enough also shot uh, Tusk and Yoga Hosers. So I guess it's oh. all about who your director is too. But uh, anyway, the, it looks gorgeous. And uh, Janelle Monet, who plays Marshal Ali's girlfriend, is uh, really terrific. And he's great in it too. Uh, yeah, I want to point yeah. him out. We oh, Marshal Ali. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is a big year for him between, right, between uh, Luke, Cage. Luke Cage, you know, House of Cards, obviously, Free State of Jones. But he, he's. So great in this. He was yeah. in the last Hunger Games movie too. He um, mm -hmm. the, yeah, that's he, right. He, he was the, the security he was the, like, guard who has to follow her around. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah. Like, there's a thing that again, like now, I feel like reevaluate. I liked him anyway. He plays an incredibly appealing character in House of Cards. You know, because he's sort of one of the few who sort of finds some principle at some point somewhere. But I want to re. I'm not going to go back and watch it again. Obviously, <laughs> no one would. Um, but uh, <laughs> but to but there's something now I want, I'm reevaluating his performance there because he is capable of conveying so much without moving. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. there is something spectacular about him that I now, like, I mean, he is, I mean, I, and I, I don't have a running list, but if I were going to make a mm -hmm. top eight, he'd, He'd be in that top eight now. And, oh, watch uh, watch Luke Cage. He's really terrific. Oh yeah. Yeah, I will. I will watch Luke Cage. And then that guy. And you mentioned Trevante Rhodes, but he he won a gold medal at the Pan Am Games in oh. the four by hundred meter relay. Oh. Like he's mm -hmm. fast. 
<laughs> and then he like instantly moved to LA. Like he finished college and he, I think he played football at Texas too, but he was mostly a sprinter and then came out here and been acting. And the fact that, Sh that Chiron gets so buff by then, it sounds like kind of an obvious conceit, but he's literally built armor right. around him. So right. It sounds like an obvious device, but it's, it's pretty powerful and, when you see him the first time in that third segment. Yeah, go ahead. And also we just, because you know, I, I know Alonzo and I watch it, but I mean, it, I don't know if is the Nick coming back. Is there another Nick? I don't I think, know if there's another Nick. But right. man, but Andre he is, Holland. Yeah, Andre Holland is unbelievable so great in, that. Yeah. in that. I mean, these are again, we've uh, we've the, the again that, that we, I got to make room in the top eight I think, for, <laughs> for, for Andre Holland too. Okay. Well, maybe make a top ten. So uh, top ten. Who does that? <laughs> Mark Strong Everybody. is in there. Oh, we Mark, love Mark Strong. We love Mark Strong. We totally Always. love Mark. Strong. All right. So um, what are, I'm going to go big. I'm going to say ten. Uh, this might be my movie of the year. This or The Lobster might be my movie of the year. Mm. They're very different. Those are both <laughs> big contenders for me too. Uh, not, <laughs> no, they're both the same. Love stinks. They're they're about <laughs> the difficulty in connecting. This is true. Yeah. Uh, Nine point eight. I yeah, I love this movie. Okay. Uh, ten. It's perfect. Okay. I gave it a nine point three. I mean, I I, I I you make a fair point if you're going to argue then. What's a 10? But whatever, 9.3, it's awesome. It's unbelievable. It's all, right. unquestionably one of the best movies of the year. Well, this changes our number then, oh, so it, someone else can do math. Uh, the, uh, it just pulls it up, basically, 0.1. Uh, it's from now it's 9.8? Yeah, the, uh, so Barry Jenkins, uh, the story going around Telluride was is that you know, he'd, he'd had a number of movies there, at least the two that he'd released, but I imagine he's, he may have made another movie mm. that may be unreleased, I don't know, but he, but he had tried to get movies before at Telluride, but he ran one of the theaters there, like at the festival, oh, he right. was always one of the guys sort of telling you each day. And then, so for him to have this movie, finally his first movie accepted there and have everyone literally melt over it mm -hmm. and tell you ride was a like a great experience for him too. very nice so yeah. moonlight i i want to say it's new york and la or was just limited release this week new york and la yes but yes. it's definitely yeah. gonna be platforming you're gonna be hearing right. about this movie a lot over the course of the coming months right. for the award season it has so. the feel of uh best the one of those uh, yeah. best picture winners that um that you won't see right <laughs> like, oh, but, but, but you should, should. but yeah. you should it's phenomenal <laughs> right thanks bye